this is going to be a very, very, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to deep breath, deep breath. Hello once again and welcome back to The Guitar Foster Parent. I'm John McLean, your host. Good to be with you for another edition of our uh, program with our project we're working on is the Harmony 2814 project. We've been working on this guitar for some time. We're nearing the end. We're in the setup process and uh, we're going to continue with that today after we take care of a little bit of housekeeping. If you're uh, new to our channel, I would invite you to check our trailer video here in the YouTube channel that will tell you why we do what we do, what inspired us to begin, why we fix up these uh, wonderful instruments, and what we do with them when we're done. Uh, spoiler alert, we give them away. That's right, we donate them to a forever home. These are instruments that uh, we've acquired from collectors or people that have started a project and decide they don't really want to finish it, they've moved on to something else. Well, these guitars deserve to be played. That's the whole, uh, that's the whole kind of ethos of our, of our uh, project here at the Guitar Foster Parent. So I foster them. I bring them in. I'm their loving parent, their foster home. I fix them up. I get them playing nice, get them set up. If anything's broken, we fix it. If anything needs adjustment, we do that. Cleaning, all of those things. Basically, turn them into instruments that are a pleasure to play, that make great music, and then we're going to donate them into the hands of someone who will do just that. Not store them away in the closet or, um, or, or, or not play them, but play them and uh, so they can make music uh, like they were designed to do. So that's the goal. All right, before we go on, if you would like to uh, have some uh, Guitar Foster Parent swag, we will provide that to you absolutely free. All you need to do is send us an email to this address, john at guitarfosterparent.com. john at guitarfosterparent.com. Here's what we have. have some great decals that have a QR code that will uh, send folks right to the channel. Um, these are nice. These are designed to be outside or... or um, or wherever you want. They're sticky on the back. And then also I have the official Guitar Foster Parent Guitar Pick that also has the QR code on the back. I'd love to send you a few of each of these if you'd like uh, them free of charge, uh, no strings attached. I'm not going to sell your information or anything like that. Just send me an email to that address, john at guitarfosterparent.com, and I will send them along to you um, in short order. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, this guitar here. And what's next? If you were with us on our last edition, when we were last together, uh, our goal was to take care of getting this nut adjusted. This nut has been replaced, one of the many things that we've replaced on the guitar. And once again, if you need to catch up, I'd invite you to go back and check all the videos on this playlist of the uh, Harmony Project. This nut was replaced, one of the first things we did. And I think I pointed out to you that when I replaced the nut and I strung the guitar up, when these nuts are manufactured, and I'm going to show you one right here, this is uh, a nut that is new. Uh, this is the exact nut that we put in the guitar. This is just a new version of it. Um, the manufacturer scores lines in the top of this bone nut as reference marks so that you know where the string should go when you get to the point of adjusting it. These uh, notches are not intended to be final. They're too high um, in most instances. And I mention that because I goofed. And at the end of our last time together, I, uh, I, I showed you the discovery of that goof. When I put this nut in, I needed to file these notches out so that the strings would stay in place. I was having a, I was having a hard time with the strings hopping out, especially in the higher registers. Strings one and two specifically were not staying in the nut and it became frustrating. So what I did was I thought, well, there's no harm in filing them just a little bit, just to give them enough for the string to stay in place. And then later on, I would file them to the appropriate depth. Here's the problem I ran into. I got a little rambunctious in my filing and I actually filed sl slot number one for the high E string, too deep. And because of that, as we pointed out in our last video, we now have the string making contact with fret number one and has created a terrible string buzz. Right? The other five are fine. 
So, I told you that I would do some research on how to fix that. I've done that. And what I wanted to point out to you is that uh, what I've decided to do is replace the nut again. Here's why. Before you say, oh, he's taking the easy way out. Well, you're absolutely right. I am, but here's why. Um, there is a technique you can use to fill this slot in, unfile it, if you will. And uh, there's a couple ways to do it. The cheap way is to take super glue and baking soda. And you basically put a little dot of super glue in the slot. You take baking soda and a really fine point, like a dental pick or maybe even a toothpick. And you basically work it into the slot, clean it up, let it set. And then supposedly you can then refile it carefully and it will hold the string and behave as if you had actually, you know, it's kind of like dental work. Here we go again with the analogy of dental work. You're filling in a cavity <laughs> and then you're uh, able to... Um, to file it back to where it needs to be, only higher this time. And then, if you really want to spend some money, you can actually buy special powders that have been manufactured to bind specifically to this bone material, and, and it does a better job. And you can actually buy special adhesives as, as well that are designed for this purpose. And I thought, well, okay, uh, maybe that's what we'll do. But here's what I discovered, and this is the point I wanted to make. A lot of people that I spoke to and, uh, and researched, mentioned that the, this is not an easy thing to do, and typically it's only worth it if you're dealing with an instrument that has its original parts and you want to maintain that. So these are collector's items, antique instruments or vintage instruments that have significant value where replacing a component like a nut would reduce that value. Okay, um, That is not the case with this Harmony. Now, I'm not saying this harmony is junk. I mean, this is a, it is kind of vintage. It's pretty old, um, but it doesn't have tremendous value, all right, um, in terms of collectability. In other words, replacing this nut is not going to plummet the collectible value of this instrument. Here's the other thing. I've already replaced it, so I'm really not hurting myself or the guitar's value in any way by doing it again. The other thing is, these nuts are cheap. They don't cost hardly anything. And I have one already. This is a 42 millimeter nut, um, which is like I say, is the exact one that I put in the first time. And it's a pretty simple procedure to replace it. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to re-replace the nut in this guitar. It's easier, it's cleaner. And look, I know you may be disappointed if you wanted to see the procedure of filling in this slot. What I've done is I found a really good video um, on how to do just that. And I'm going to include that video right here. So if you'd like to take a break from the channel, by the way, I'm violating a bunch of rules on how to build an audience on YouTube. Oh, never send people away. Look, this is a really good video. It's well done. If you'd like to see um, how to do this so that you may want to do it, and I may do it on a future instrument. I just decided it was not the right choice for this guitar this particular project. Um, feel free to head over there. It's a great video and really uh, shows you um, in a very good way how to do it. We're not going to do that today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step away for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and perform the procedure on replacing this nut again, just like I did the first time. I'm not going to show that because I've already done it. So if you want to go back and see me replace the nut on this very guitar, here's the video for that. Okay. This is the video where we actually did the nut replacement on this guitar. So if you want to link over to that, there it is. And um, you can see us do that. There's no sense in taping that up and doing it again. So I'm going to do the same procedure. I'm going to put this very nut on this guitar. And this time, th then we'll come back and we'll do the correct filing procedure without getting rambunctious and boring it out to a point that's too low. Again, my mistake. So I've got my sandpaper and all the procedure. Again, if you want to see that, you can go back and see that other video. So I'm going to be back in just a moment. When I am, we'll have a new nut that's no longer too low, and we will continue with the setup process by setting the correct nut slot height with some special files. Be back in just a second. And through the magical passage of time, we have installed a new nut again. Um, you can see this nut um, has not been touched. I did not 
I didn't even breathe on it wrong this time. I did have to sand the nut to get it to fit in the slot just like last time. Simple, simple procedure. The old nut lifted right out because we used barely any adhesive. I will say with this nut, I used no adhesive at all. Remember we talked about that all the adhesive is for is just to hold it in place while you string it, okay? In other words, if I take the strings off and tilt the guitar and the nut falls out, then we need a couple dots of wood glue. This one is nice and snug, all right? I'd use no adhesive at all. I placed it in the slot, pressed it in, checked to make sure it was seated everywhere, and it is sitting like a dream. So no adhesive this time. All right, so the nut's in, the guitar strings are back on and in tune, okay? So let's talk a little bit now about how we move forward. We're finally moving forward on the guitar foster parent. Okay, so if you'll remember last time, we did the string action height. And what we did was we used this uh, gauge from Music Nomad, and we placed the first, the, uh, first fret capo in, and we checked the string height at fret number 12. Um, when I put the nut in, I had to go back through that procedure quickly to check and see if it had changed any of our measurements. It did very, very slightly. I mean, almost not enough to mess with. I made some extremely fine adjustments down here at the bridge wheels on this tunematic style bridge. Um, I didn't tape that because we, we did it last week, um, but it was so minor um, to get those back where they were, which kind of surprised me because this nut is quite a bit higher than the one that I overfiled. Um, I really expected it to be off by more than it was, but it wasn't, which is good. So I've got it back where it was, and we are now back to the present time going to address the nut slot height. And how do we do that? Well, we use a couple of tools. The first one is this Music Nomad nut height gauge. And this is a feeler gauge, much like the one, if you'll recall, that we use to adjust the truss rod. It's a lot like a spark plug gauge in a car. It's a gauge of precision machined aluminum, um, I guess these are called nodes or tabs, and you fold them out, and on each one it is etched with some guidance. So on this particular one, there are one, two, three, four, five uh, gauges within this tool, and they're marked. So the there's one here that is 20 thousandths of an inch or half a millimeter. All right, half a millimeter. And this says you should use this one for low E and A on guitar. Okay, so we're going to do that. So that's for string six and string five, obviously. And the instructions say this, um, put the guitar in tune, place the guitar in playing position, which means oriented this way. Um, they say that changes, you know, how the guitar behaves, and so we'll do that. And then you insert this feeler gauge between the string in question and the first fret, okay? And you use what's called the touch rule. Now, the touch rule, according to Music Nomad, is pretty simple. Basically, it says this. If I insert this gauge between the fret and the string, and it doesn't touch at all, in other words, I'm laying this on the fret and the string is sitting up above the gauge, that is no touch. And as you can see right here, <laughs> they say, no touch, file nut. Makes sense, right? If we file the nut, the string will lower and then um, get closer to touching. Touch means that I insert this in the, and the string just touches, um, just kisses the surface of the gauge. That means we have no, if, and if there's no buzz and we have a touch, then that's a smiley face. In other words, we leave the nut alone. It's just perfecto. However, if I have to, you know, work the gauge in between the fret and you know, in other words if this is the string and this is the fret and I'm having to kind of you know push it in there so that it's squeezing the gauge then that means that the nut uh, slot is too deep um, and you're probably going to have buzzing which is what we had which is why what necessitated having to replace the nut again because it was too deep or fill the slot um, so that's the touch rule pretty simple right not much uh, not much to that um, actually, there are six nodes in this gauge. I just found one hiding in there. It, we won't use it, but it's 0.22 or 55. It's for the thickest one. Um, that one is probably used maybe for bases that want a higher action, something. Anyway, we're going to start with the half millimeter, half millimeter or 20 thousandths of an inch gauge. Now, before we start measuring, how do we file the nut? Well, I've got a, a kit here from Music Nomad. It came in a 
nice case, and probably the reason why is because these are not cheap. This is a set of six nut files. They are precision machine, diamond coated, and here's what they look like. Here is the largest one, and you can see it's labeled as 46 thousandths of an inch, and it is a diamond file that's placed in a plastic handle that you can you know, hold pretty easily. And it's machined to the precise uh, width of 0 .46, 0 0.46 inches, 46 thousandths of an inch. This is the biggest one. There's six of them. And they go from 0 0.046 all the way down to the thinnest one for the high E string, which is 0 0.10. Okay? This one obviously is almost like a knife blade. So, um, and this is the one I got rambunctious with. Obviously, with a knife blade, this is going to cut pretty aggressively, and I just pressed too hard. And so we've had to go through all this again, but we're, that's all behind us now. The instructions say when you're using these to use light pressure, okay, light pressure, which is difficult for me, all right? I have a tendency, I mean, I'm a bassist at heart, so I push pretty hard. <laughs> so light pressure. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the file like this. And it also says, for some reason, to angle the file slightly toward the headstock. And it doesn't specify what that means. I'm thinking probably it's so that you don't damage the first fret when you're filing. You don't make contact with it. Um, it might also be to provide the, the, the slot in the nut with kind of a little angle to give you a kind of a high point toward the bridge, which gives you a better lock um, on the string tension, which makes sense. So we'll do that. I'm going to just angle it just, and I mean by slightly, I'm talking barely enough to even discern. And then we're just going to gently, without pushing down, in fact, I'm going to let the tool do the work. This tool has a little bit of mass to it, not much. And I'm going to let the tool do the work because um, as I failed to do last time, um, you can always file a little more, but if you get it too deep, now you're faced with either replacing the nut or filling the slot, which is a pain. And then, of course, we have to remove the string from the slot to file. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to release the tension a little bit, drop it out of the nut, and then do some filing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point the camera down so that you can see what's going on, and let's get started. Okay, here we go. So we've got our uh, neck on our rest here. Uh, here's our files. I've got them all lined out in order, so I can't get them wrong. I'm going to double check this because I just moved things around. 4, 6, 3, 6, 2, 8, 1, 7, 1, 3, and 1, 0. Oh. Okay, so those are all in ascending order. And, um, and I'll check them again before I use them. And then here's my gauge. And I have it opened up to 0 0.50 millimeters, or 20 thousandths of an inch. And it says right here, low E and low A guitar. I don't know if you can see that on there, kind of reflective. And so, as the instructions say, we're going to put the guitar in playing position. Uh, and by the way, the guitar is in tune, and I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to say this several times. Um, it's very important that you don't skip the step of tuning the guitar after each adjustment. Um, the string tension is everything. When you're talking these measurements, if the strings are too loose or too tight, it's going to change things because we're talking tiny, tiny tolerances. So don't get lazy and skip the step of tuning, all right? doesn't take that long to do. And uh, plus, we've got nice, fine Grover tuners on this guitar, so it's even easier. So what I'm going to do, the guitar is in tune, all right? I just tuned it. I'm going to put it in playing position. And then I'm going to simply insert the gauge at the first fret. And I'm going to observe with my eyeballs, does it touch? Does it follow the touch rule? So in we go. And as I suspected, because this is a new unfiled nut, um, make sure I'm on the fret. This is kind of hard to do. Notice also, I'm holding it in playing position without touching the strings. You don't want to do this. All right, that's obviously going to give you an inaccurate measurement. So make sure you're not touching the strings. So I'm holding it kind of down here at the base of the neck, where I got a good grip on it, and it's in playing position. And then I'm going to measure with the correct gauge, and I'm going to, as I suspected, see no touch. Okay? And since this gauge is also for string number five, the A string, I can also see pretty good amount of daylight there as well. All right, so what does that mean? That means we file the nut. So what we're going to do is I'm going to remove enough tension off of string six so that I can lift it out of the saddle, or not the saddle, that's not a saddle, it's a nut slot. And now it's just dangling, okay? 
and I'm going to take my largest file, which is intended for string number six. This one is 46 thousandths of an inch. I'm going to place the file. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> I'm going to place the file in the slot and it says to angle the file slightly. Now, one thing I've just noticed about this, you see how this, they put this surface here? This surface actually rests on the frets, okay? And that's so that you can't damage the frets. But it says to angle it, so I'm gonna put it in the little groove that the manufacturer gave me, and I'm gonna angle it ever so slightly. I mean, I'm just gonna lift it off the frets barely. And with letting the tool do the work, I'm going to grab the end of the headstock just so there's no motion here. I'm going to very gently file out some material. Okay? And lift it out. Now I can see a little bone dust where I filed it some. Okay? So what I'm going to do now, and this is a trial and error process. Again, you can always file more out easily. If you file too much, you've got more work to do as we learned the hard way on the channel. So I'm gonna place the string back in, turn on my tuner, I need to plug my tuner back into the guitar. I've got a Fender chromatic tuner plugged in here. I'm gonna reestablish my tension. Okay, oh, that's too high. These Grover tuners are so good that a little goes a long way. Okay, there we go. We're dead on with E. Okay, now, same thing. I'm going to put the guitar in playing position. I'm going to take my feeler gauge. And I'm going to, see, follow the touch rule. And there's still lots of daylight there. Okay? So, we're going to repeat the process. Now, I, I was pretty sure that there was going to be daylight there. Because I, uh, I'd only, I mean, I only filed out just, I mean, I probably could have counted the specks of dust that came out. But I wanted to show you the process. You're going to do this over and over and over again for all six strings. Um, measure first, because filing may not be necessary. Um, probably will be. And then just double check to make sure you're using the correct file. Um, and in this case, I am. And then you just keep measuring until the string is low enough to just touch the top. All right. If you have to wedge it in, it's too low. And you're probably going to have string buzz and it's your, you know. Anyway, I've beat that horse to death. Poor horse. Okay. So let's, uh, let's take the string back off. You know, you don't have to back it off too much. Lift it out. Let it dangle. And now we're going to file some more. I'm going to double check to make sure... I've got my correct file, and I do. I'm going to lay it in the slot, and what I, I think what I like to do, and maybe this is why they designed these this way, I like to just lay it on the frets. Put it in the slot, lay it on the frets, get my fingers on here, and then angle it slightly toward the headstock. I'm going to grip the end of the headstock just for some leverage here, and I'm going to let the tool do the work. I'm going to take a little more out this time. Okay. And uh, I don't know if you can see. I want to see if I can show this. You see there's a little dust there around where that happened. Can you see that? Maybe a shadow. Um, all right. Now, put the string back in the slot. I can tell it's deeper now by looking at it. I'm going to turn my tuner on. Get us back up to E. That's D sharp. There we go. There's E, dead center. Now, same thing. Playing position. Feeler gauge. We still Lots of daylight, but I can tell it's lower. It's now way lower than the A. Okay, so we're going to repeat this process for each of these strings. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you step aside and get you a nice cool beverage. 
and then I'm going to complete the process. This would be a probably hour long video if I were to show you every step. I'll be back when we get down to string number six and then we'll see how it turned out. Did you miss me? All right, um, I know I said I was gonna complete it before I came back, but I wanted to show you a couple things. Um, I've completed string six and five and it went fine, had to file quite a bit. I'm now down to D, but I wanted to remind you, when as you work your way down the guitar to the higher strings, you gotta switch gauges. Because remember, this gauge says only the um, A and E strings, low on guitar. So I need to remember to find the gauge for, I guess, D and G, and there it is. And this one is 0 0.018 or 0.45 millimeters. Now you say, well, what is, well, I mean, what is five hundredths of a millimeter gonna matter? Well, we wanna do it right. So we're gonna follow their advice and we're gonna switch to the, uh, the correct one for D and G. And I'm looking again just to be sure and okay. So, um, I measured, uh, the reason I came back is because I'd forgotten at first and I measured with this one and realized, oh, that's the wrong one. Still tons of, of room. So I'm going to do some filing, but just to remind you that you need to switch as you go. So pay attention and um, on to the D string we go. Another quick reminder, if your guitar has string trees, don't forget to utilize the string trees correctly. If you tune back up and forget to poke the string back under the string tree, you're not gonna get the correct pitch. And that is obviously going to greatly affect how the string behaves at the nut. These string trees, you can see, angle the strings down to give them uh, the right angle to give a good tight uh, cutoff there at the nut. So make sure that you don't get uh, in a hurry, <laughs> like I have a tendency to do, uh, preaching to the choir a bit here, and make sure that you, you know, install the string under the string tree when you tune it back up. Doing well, just got the G string complete. And in fact, I'll go ahead and measure it while we're together. Playing position. Now this gets a little trickier when you're coming down from underneath. So what I've been doing is I've been moving underneath. So coming up between, you know, underneath with some of these, and you know, it's kind of hard to see. So you gotta, you gotta kinda, but you can see that is touching that string just about perfectly, okay? And when I ring that G and it's in tune, got a nice buzz-free tone. All right, on to B. All right, we've done E, A, D, G, and B, and measured them, and they all are fine. Now it's time for string number one, the high E string. This is the one that I got aggressive on last time, and so I thought we would do this one together. I've got my sixth and final file, which is the 10 thousandths. This is going to be a very, very, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to deep breath, deep breath, because uh, I really don't want to, have to replace this nut again. So anyway, here's my file. I'm going to set it carefully here. The hard part with this, and I ran into this a little bit on these non-wound strings, um, strings two and three especially, these files have a tendency to want to hop out of the slot because they're very, very thin. And again, the manufacturer uh, did not provide much of a seat for these, probably because they wanted you to be able to have it as high as you want. So uh, I found I had to apply a little bit more tension to keep this file from, you know, hopping out of the slot. And then, gosh, you know, if you don't want to ding it into the nut where there isn't a slot. I mean, if you do that, it's mostly cosmetic unless you do it really badly. But uh, so anyway, just a word of caution, these files are going to tend to try to hide out or hop out rather. So what I'm going to do here is I've got to find this groove. And there it is. I'm going to lay, but see when you do that, it hops out. So I can't use the whole fret rest deal. All right, so here we go. Less is more on this, and I'm just going to let the tool do the work. I'm barely, just the weight of my index finger is all that's on this. And I've got it slightly angled toward the headstock like I've been doing all along. Okay, I have taken barely any matter at all out. Um, and now I'm gonna place the string back in, push it under the string tree, tune her back up real fast. You can already hear there's a buzz there. But the buzz is not because it's touching the fret, and I'm gonna show you that. Okay, so we got a buzz. 
Yeah, you hear that? But I'm going to measure, and I can tell you for a fact um, with my gauge here that we are not touching that fret. In fact, we're nowhere close to it. Using our touch rule, um, you know, actually, that's just about perfect. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And I can tell by looking at it, we are not touching. We are up off there, but that's all it took. So no wonder I got too aggressive last time. I literally, I mean, you saw uh, live, I just literally took, and I was just, just the weight of my index finger. I do have kind of sausage fingers, but that was all it took, you know, kind of like flicking a cigarette. That's, that's all I had on there. And that was enough. Um, I, any lower and we might run into the problem we had last time. So that explains how I goofed it up so bad. But now we've got a buzz, don't we? Um, where's a pick? Here, I'll use my official guitar foster parent pick. If you want these, email me and I'll send you some. Um, now the guitar's laying on its back. Could that matter? This is, by the way, dead center in tune. So let's play it like this and see how it does. Not touching any strings. Well, see, now the buzz isn't there. Now, some of the strings have edged out of tune a little bit. Okay. So, I think we've got our nut height done. Hooray. Well, that actually went really smoothly, um, but I did it a little at a time. I will tell you the elapsed time, uh, that took me about 28 minutes um, to do the whole thing. Part of it you saw, part of it you didn't. Um, so it really wasn't too bad. A um, couple of observations as you're removing the strings from the nut to do your filing, you don't have to loosen them as much as I did at first. Um, I would say three or four turns and it's enough to lift it out of the saddle or out of, I keep saying saddle, um, cause conceptually that's kind of what it is to me out of the, uh, nut slot and then set it to the side. Um, pretty simple. Um, it really didn't take that much time at all to pop it back in, retune it again, what, be careful of your string trees if you have them and make sure you're using those when you tune up because otherwise you're not going to get the right tuning result. Um, yeah, yeah, let's show you a, uh, show you a close up. There we go. Um, this, those files work really, really great. Again, the only challenge I had was, uh, for the, the narrower the slot, the harder it was because it had a tendency to want to hop out. Um, the thing I would caution you about out of hard experience here is to just let the tool do the work. All right. Almost because these, like I said, these do have some weight to them. You know, they're, they've got a little bit of mass and, um, and, you know, they've angled them now. I think they did that so that you could put your finger on there. But I would not recommend pushing. Just let the weight of your finger and then just angle it slightly toward the headstock and you'll get a good result. It looks great and it sounds great. So the nut height is complete. Once again, I'll show you the, uh, the tools. These are from Music Nomad. This is their nut height gauge. And, you know, it folds up in a nice little, little deal like that. And then these nut files, which come in, in a set of six, and I think they have different options. So this kit here is the one that runs from 46 thousandths up to, uh, or down to rather, uh, 0.10. So 0 0.046 to 0 0.010. And it came in this nice little um, carrying case. Um, these weren't cheap, you know, but they're available. And, you know, again, I think you can use um, other files, but I wanted something that was designed for this. Um, and I, again, I, I don't, I'm not sponsored by Music Nomad, but I use a lot of their tools and I can tell you um, I've liked all of them. They're great tools. Um, so I would recommend them um, heartily and you can find them all over the internet. They have a lot of, of cool little kits and so forth. All right, so the Harmony Nut Height is complete. Now, next time on the project, as we move through our setup process, we're going to talk about intonation. Now, intonation with a fixed bridge, in other words, fixed saddle bridge like this one. This is kind of the tunomatic style that you find on a lot of Gibson style guitar or saddle. You can't adjust saddle intonation individually. 
So how do we intone a guitar like this? Can we? We'll talk about that next time. And then the final step will be pickup height. Did you know that the magnets in these pickups should be a certain distance from the strings? Well, now that we have our strings where we want them, all the way up and down the neck, which as you know, has taken a lot of work. We've had to shim the neck, we've had to adjust the truss rod, we've had to do the, the nut twice. Um, we've had to do uh, string action height and all that. We got it where we want it now. These pickups, are they the right height to give us the best sound through the amplifier? It'll be time to plug this in and measure. There's a way to measure these, and we're going to do that next time on the Guitar Foster Parent. Before we go, I want to thank you for joining us for this episode. I want to encourage you to comment below if you have any ideas or you're like, no, 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 there's a better way to do that. Let me know. And if you want to poke fun at me for having to do the nut twice, that's okay too. I got it coming. Um, and just uh, let me know also if you would like to nominate someone um, to receive this guitar as their forever home. Now, I want you to do that So, uh, in the, in the um, interest of privacy by sending me an email. Here's the address, john at guitarfosterparent.com. You can use that to nominate a, um, a forever home for this guitar. Uh, this Harmony 2814. The only requirement is, is that they'll take good care of it and that they will play it. I want this guitar to get worn out again. And uh, the only way to do that is to make music with it. Um, it could be someone who's a student. This is a great guitar, by the way, for a student because it's simple and it's lightweight, so it's great for a youth, maybe. And, um, and it's a wonderful instrument for someone who's just learning to play. It could be someone who can't afford a guitar and uh, wants to play, or maybe they had to sell one, they fell on hard times and they'd love to have one. Whatever the case may be, um, anyone that will play the instrument and take good care of it like it should be is eligible. Please let me know if you have some ideas on who that might be and nominate them at the email address below, john at guitarfosterparent.com. Don't forget also, that's where you let me know if you want some swag. I've got decals and picks. I'd love to send you some free of charge. Send me an email if you'd like some. Give me your mailing address and I'll send them out for you. And um, that's all. Next time, we'll talk intonation and we'll move toward pickup height adjustment, if necessary. That's coming up next as we near the end of the Harmony Project on the Guitar Foster Parent. Please like and subscribe so that we'll see you next time right here on the channel. Thanks for watching and bye-bye for now.